Welcome to Jets This Week, the playoff edition. We've never said that before. It's uh, This is a first. The Jets came back to uh, to Winnipeg. Well, it's not a first for Tim or for you, Ed. I'm sure you covered uh, Jets 1.0, but this is the first time in Jets 2.0 history, and uh, uh, the, the Jets will get started on Thursday night. They're playing the first place in the Western Conference team, the Anaheim Ducks. They had 109 points. The Jets finished with 99. This is team seed one versus seed eight, but... Let's talk about that, Ed Tate. Is that as meaningful as it might be in some years? No, I don't think so. I think that the, you know, the difference between one and eight is 10 points, and I think that's representative of what happened in the Western Conference this year. It's pretty tight. The Jets were really good in the Central Division, the toughest division in, in hockey. Uh, they played Anaheim pretty tight this year, lost in a shootout, lost in overtime, and lost another game 4-1. But I think these teams are pretty evenly matched, and so I, I, you know, I, I know it's cliche that everybody starts at zero in the playoffs. But given the matchup here, I don't think it's as lopsided as a one versus eight might sound. I've got some storylines, so I'm just going to go through them with you guys. Tim Andre Pavlik, obviously, just named uh, second star of the week by the NHL uh, uh, earlier this morning. He's obviously a key factor for the Jets, and uh, what do you expect from him, and uh, how good does he have to be, and do you think the bubble might burst? I don't know about the bubble. I think he's going to have to be great this week, um, but I think you can say that about any playoff series at any time, that if you don't have goaltending, you have no chance, and that's just a function of the way the playoffs work. Um, I think he's been really exceptional down the stretch here from probably from you know the his return to the net in St. Louis on that fateful night where it went wrong at the end. Uh, but since that time, he's been the big league goalie I think most Jets fans have been hoping for. More of that in the playoffs will get them somewhere. I want to talk a little bit about Ryan Getzlaff and Corey Perry. And obviously, they are the top ducks. They have, uh, have been together on and off since 2005. They won a World Junior Championship just down the road in Grand Forks. Then they won a Stanley Cup in 2007 with the Ducks. 2010, they won a gold medal at the Olympics in Vancouver. 2014, they won a gold medal together in Sochi. Perry has won a Hart Trophy along the way. If you want to beat the Ducks in a seven-game series, you have to limit Ryan Getzlaff and Corey Perry. You can't shut them down. A number of things that uh, that you know you need to be aware of them. Obviously, when they score, the Ducks most often win. So, you know, you have to limit them. I don't think you can let them, you can't give turn the puck over in the neutral zone against them. If they can gain your blue blue line easily and get set up in your zone and, they, and they're fresh when they get that on a shift, that goes to their advantage. If you make them work in their zone, dump it in and make Ryan Getzlaff go 200 feet with the puck. By the time he gets into your zone, the shift might be, uh, you're well into the second half of it and he's not as fresh, Perry isn't as fresh. You got a chance to get them off the ice quickly without good things happening. So uh, a number of good things for them. So puck possession against this line, make them play defense is, is a big factor for me. Ed, discipline. Uh, the Jets have been uh, you know, one of the most heavily penalized teams in the NHL. Uh, oddly enough, the Ducks this year, their power play wasn't very good, 28th in the league. I bet you right now Bruce Boudreau has a whistle around his neck and is working exactly on that. And you know, don't be fooled. This power play can get hot in a hurry with those with that kind of talent. How important is discipline? Well, it's it's mammoth. And in the last little while, the Jets have been, I think, cleaning up a little bit. They're not taking as many stick fouls and offensive zone penalties. We saw on the last road trip in St. Louis that Mark Stewart, who doesn't back down from anybody, got into a couple melees or brouhaha's, whatever you want to say, and, and turned the other cheek. And, it, you know, it, it helped the Jets. One led to a power play and a power play goal. This is where the playoff experience might come into, into play because guys like Ryan Kessler are going to get in your grill a little bit. You've got to be able to back away and, and fight another day. It's, it's nasty. It's dirty in the playoffs. And if the Jets don't control that aspect, they're going to be down an awful lot uh, against uh, uh, killing penalties. The other thing is, is that if you can play 5-on-5 five five against Anaheim, their 5-on-5 five five numbers aren't as impressive as you might think for a team with 109 points. So... Again, critical for the Jets to stay out of the box. As you mentioned, their power play isn't ranked very high, the Ducks, but there's a lot of dangerous pieces on that crew. All right, we're going to go buzzer around here for a moment, and I'm just going to throw uh, out an issue or a name, and I'll start with you, Tim Campbell, Ryan Kessler. 
playoff experience. I, you know, I think that's a, a big thing. And Ed mentioned it. And I, uh, I think in this series, that's a real wild card for the Jets. And it's one of the reasons I, I might not be as confident, I'd say, at the start of the series about how this is going to go because uh, there's no knowing what will happen. I know the Jets have some Stanley Cup winners on their roster, but by and large as a group, they have no playoff experience. And you can't wait three games to get with the program in a seven-game series. So um, I think Kessler embodies playoff experience. The Ducks have lots of it. And to start with, I think that's their big edge. My uh, buzzer around question is, or name is Adam Lowry, and I think he's a player to really keep your eye on. This is a guy that uh, has the season has gone on and the hockey has gotten harder to play. He's been better, and I think that, that there's uh, a lot of players need to make a step right now, and I expect Adam Lowry will be one that makes a step. And don't be surprised if he isn't a central figure in this series. I'm not, not sure about offensively, but I think he's probably going to draw a lot of Ryan Getzlaff or a little more than you would expect, and uh, maybe quite a bit of Ryan Kessler too. So Adam Lowry, that big body and, uh, and that real sharp hockey mind, he's in a, guy, in a guy to keep an eye on. I'll go to you now, Ed, and I'll say Frederick Anderson. Well, as much as we're, Andre Pavlik is kind of under the microscope, you could say the same thing about Frederick Anderson in Anaheim. You know, he's got good numbers, but it's sort of like the same situation in St. Louis. You're looking at a team that's really powerful, and if people are looking for a question mark on their depth chart, that's the spot they circle is in the net. It could be Gibson. It could be Anderson. Anderson was in all three games against the Jets. You know, he's put up some decent numbers, but there's a, a huge question mark about him and whether he can get it done in the playoffs. Bruce Boudreaux. Got experience, and there's this little black cloud hanging over his head. I think a lot of it may be media-generated. But his playoff numbers aren't that good in Washington, not that great in Anaheim, just one series win. And uh, I think a lot of people are looking at Bruce Boudreaux as somehow the reason or the catalyst for what is and isn't right with the Ducks. Uh, I, I think the factor is overrated probably at the start of the series, but as things go on and coaches and teams have to adjust, we'll see. I think a lot of Bruce Boudreaux as a coach, though, I'll, I should say that. Great stuff. This was Jets this week, the playoff edition. Uh, Tim and I will uh, will be cooking something up from uh, from Anaheim early in this series, and then uh, we'll be joined by Ed when we get back to Winnipeg. And if we go back to Anaheim, you might see all three of us there. So stick to Jets this week and uh, look for all of our articles in, on the Winnipeg Free Press or winnipegfreepress.com. Thanks for watching.